want to find the inverse function for each of the given one-to-one -one functions. They're telling us the given functions are one-to-one -one so that we know that the inverses are also inverse functions. Remember, we can think of a function and its inverse as two functions that undo each other. So for example, if f of x is equal to y, then f inverse of y is equal to x. So that's telling us that for every point on f with an x coordinate of x, and a y coordinate of y, there would be a point on the inverse function where the x coordinate would be y and the y coordinate would be x. So if we have a point on a given function and we interchange the x and y coordinates, we'll find a point on the inverse function. And we can use this idea to help us determine the equation of inverse functions. So what we're going to do here is first replace f of x with y so we're going to write the same function in terms of x and y. So we'll have y equals four divided by the quantity x minus five. And then to determine the inverse function, we're just going to interchange the x and y variables. So the inverse function will be x equals four divided by the quantity y minus five. So this is our inverse function, but now we do want to solve this for y and then replace y with inverse function notation. So to solve this equation for y, this is a proportion, so we could put x over one and then cross multiply, which means x times the quantity y minus five must equal one times four. So we'd have x times the quantity y minus five equals four. And then to solve this for y, let's divide both sides by x. So this would simplify to one, leaving us with y minus five equals four divided by x. And then we could just add five to both sides of the equation and we'd have four divided by x plus five, which would be our inverse function, solve for y. So our last step here will be to replace y with f inverse of x. So we have f inverse of x is equal to four divided by x plus five. And if we have access to graphing software, there's a nice way to check our work graphically. If we graph the original function and the inverse function on the same coordinate plane, the two functions should be symmetrical across the line y equals x. So looking at this graph, the blue graph is the original function f of x, and the red graph is the inverse function. And this thin black line is the line y equals x. Notice if you were to fold these two graphs across the line y equals x, they would match up perfectly with the other function, verifying they're symmetrical across the line y equals x, and therefore they're inverses. Let's go and take a look at a second example. Here we're given the function f of x equals the cube root of the quantity x plus three. Again, the first step is to replace f of x with y. So we have y equals the cube root of x plus three. And now to find the inverse function, we'll interchange the x and y variables. So we'll have x equals the cube root of the quantity y plus three. And now we want to solve this for y, so to undo this cube root, we'll go ahead and cube both sides of the equation. So we'd have x cubed equals the cube root of y plus three cubed. So on the left side we have x cubed. On the right side, when we cube a cube root, they'll undo each other, leaving us with just the quantity y plus three. So now we'll subtract three on both sides of the equation, so we'd have y equals x cubed minus three. And now that we have this solve for y, we'll go ahead and replace y with f inverse of x. So f inverse of x, is equal to x cubed minus three. And again, we'll go ahead and verify this graphically by graphing both the original function and the inverse function on the same coordinate plane to verify symmetry across the line y equals x. So in blue, we have the original function f of x. In red, we have the inverse function f inverse of x. And in black, we have the line y equals x. Notice how we do have symmetry across the line y equals x. 
which does verify that we found our inverse function correctly. Okay, I hope you found these examples helpful.